Step one, wake up early, gon' rise with the sun. Step two, get some good, some food in you. Step three, you grow hard about what you wanna be. Step four, fuck everybody, just do your thing. Wake up, today's gonna be a good day. 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 Wake up. Today's gonna be a good day. Wake up. Today's gonna be a good day. Wake up. Today's gonna be a good day. Yo, set your affirmations, aspirations. I got shit to do. The aftermath of preparation. Good food, good mood, blood in circulation. One step at a time. Yeah, that's how you make it. Set a goal you control, and the steps you take them. I try to pick. One thought, have some concentration And if I make a mistake, it's called education I try to do this every day, call it replication Wake up, today's gonna be a good day 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 Wake up Today's gonna be a good day so Life ain't easy, yo I think there's a reason, though Ups and downs Just like every different season, yo Sometimes I'm high Other times I'm barely breathing, though I you always gotta fight and hide From the demons, yo Negative thoughts are poison they ride, uh Head full of flaws So here come the clouds, uh They'll never stop Unless I can swap All the bad for the good In my head when I'm lost, uh yeah, so I'ma fake it till I make it Positive thoughts are overtaken, I got patience One day at a time is how you operate a cadence A flow, you grow, you show yourself a foundation Stay away from all the shit that causes temptation I know that I like to do it cause of sensation I live my life in my head like a narration Don't expect greatness, do my best, man, I'll take it Wake up, today's gonna be a good day Wake up Today's gonna be a good day. Wake up. 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 Today's gonna be a good day. the west coast we are everywhere true crime is we are asking for the public's help we are searching in the woods we are doing what it takes here on the bullhorn betty channels to find answers to the most alarming cases we have been watching on the news I can tell you personally that I have traveled this entire country seeking these answers and bringing that content right here to you here on the Bullhorn Betty channels and Bullhorn Betty crime stories. We are happy with the work that we've done. We brought many answers to the public and we have defied mainstream media in our pursuit of the truth in these cases. We will continue to work we will continue to fight for these victims, and we will continue to tell their stories here on my channels. Welcome to the Bullhorn Betty brand of channels and the Coffee Club. Thank you for your love, thank you for your support, and more importantly, thank you for allowing me to bring these victims' stories to each and every one of you advocating for each of these victims. God bless you, God bless America, and more importantly, God bless our victims. Well, good afternoon, my beautiful coffee beans here on YouTube and X. It's nice to see you this Sunday afternoon. We just got out of church. If you are part of our coffee club that goes to church, we had a great service today, right? Give it up to the pastor. What a great message. 
Thanks, pastors. And Marcella, Pastor Marcello and Pastor Kelly were in chat with us today. It was nice. It was nice. It's nice to see everybody here. You guys know why we're here. We're here because of Sebastian Rogers, a 15-year-old autistic boy that disappeared February 26, 2024, around 6 a.m., according to his mother, if we believe her. And since then, we just have, I don't know, we've received a different story almost every single time they come to the news. There was some beautiful person, I don't know who they are, a big shout out to them, that actually put a spreadsheet together. I don't know if you guys have been over to that mysterious disappearance of uh, Sebastian Rogers Facebook group. They've got a lot of great people in there doing some great work and one person put, compiled a, um, uh, a spreadsheet with all the interviews and it was like just lit up with Seth and you got Katie and Chris, <laughs> Katie and Chris here, you know, like a little tiny bit of, uh, they have not done any really, I mean, to the level of what Seth has done, what Seth has put into trying to find his son, and then you look at the people that had custody of that child and responsible of that for that child, and you hear basically crickets. And the only time we have heard, up until this most recent one, has all been about their image. The whole reason why they came to, to do these interviews wasn't to talk about Sebastian, wasn't to advocate for Sebastian. Hell, they didn't even have a photo of him. They didn't even show a photo of him. There was only one that had a photo of him, and I'm pretty sure it was at the suggestion of Chronicles of Olivia. How do I know that? Because I've worked next to her for several years now. And I know her work, and I know the family pictures she'd be going through. Can we pick this up? Can we do this? She already has an idea of how she wants to do her video. Because, again, she didn't go in there looking at looking sideways at them. She went in there looking at them to help them. Help them get their son's name out there, and you know, further. So this is the situation we're at, and we've been developing theories along the way because we don't believe that, I mean, there's just a lot of things that we don't believe. You know, their stories change. Let's just go through a few of, of the stuff we don't believe. Um, the stories changed. When she called, right, when she called Chris that morning, the conversation, the three-hour conversation she had with him at night, we listen to the um, deceptive detective talk about that this is a known rule amongst them. They can't really talk, you know, figure out why it is. But this number three, when people start using number threes, they it, 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 it's a signaling that it could be a lie, just like the number seven being our favorite number, which happens to be mine. So obviously when they were talking about this, I'm like, ding, 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 you know. So it, it, it's kind of weird we're hearing this in the ways we hear three. We hear three when she's talking about how long it took her that morning when she realized Sebastian was gone to call Chris. And then we also hear in her story that there are three, you know, there was a three hour conversation the night before. And there's another mysterious three that popped up in this story. And that's with the two aunts and cousin, right? Three people. Three additional people. Kind of funny how that happened. Never heard about them at the beginning, but by uh, Chronicles of Olivia, we got a cousin. And by Nancy Grace, we got a whole other family going with them. So, I don't know. I don't know. The other thing was the polygraph test and them being cleared. Chris just wanted everybody to know they were all cooperating. They've all been cleared. Nothing to see over here. Nothing to see over here. And we're a little smarter than that because none of this made sense. We don't believe the security system. We don't believe that the security system doesn't exist. So anyways, we were looking at all these things that we just don't believe, that don't make sense to us, and we're theorizing. I know many of you guys have. You guys have shared those theories with me. And there's like three major theories that keep kind of boiling to the surface. And one of those theories is Chris was home, and he just snapped. Whatever happened that day... When they came back from the steakhouse, the house just exploded in rage. Something happened inside that home. And the three-hour conversation was talking about their alibis to set up the next day as he made himself his way back to Memphis, Tennessee. That is theory one. Did Christopher Proudfoot snap? What can we look at to see if Christopher Proudfoot could snap? Okay? 
what do we look at if we're looking at somebody's behavior? What are we looking at to find out if they snapped? Past behavior. That's where we would be. So before we get started, I'm going to give you a little more commentary and we're going to open the phone lines up because I know there are many of you that have your own theories. There are many of you that believe this theory or a variation of this theory. What is your theory? Uh, Teresa Morton, thank you for being here. It's nice to see you. SSD, Wani, it's nice to see you. True Crime Housewife, it's nice to have you here as well. Good afternoon. Karma, Jody, Stephanie, oh, Rusty's up in the house. It's nice to see you, my love. Cindy, the, uh, Seek the Missing, it's nice to see you. Amy, good, good afternoon. It's so hard because I'm so used to saying good morning. I'm really trying over here. So if I throw out a good morning to you, just, just work with me here, okay? Hot mess. Ooh, we all are hot messes. You should have seen me. I just splashed a little bit of makeup on for you guys. I have to pro I promise you that. When I'm working as hard as I'm working back here, I look. I, I, my hair is sticking up. I don't have makeup on. I've got like 18 million cups of coffee, you know, laying everywhere. It's like it, I just get into, you just get into it. You don't have time. You just got to go, 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 go. And then when information, I know you guys haven't seen me in a few days. <laughs> so at least live. And I'm like, they're going to kill me. I got to go live. I look like death. Help me. Christina, it's nice to see you. Miss Seeker, it's nice to have you here. Maria, Belva, nice to have you. Black Sky, Stephanie, our beautiful, where is Summer? 1-800-TBI-FINE. I love your name. Talk about great activism right there. Everywhere you go, every chat room you see, God bless you for that. Lori Lowe, it's nice to see you, my love. Crystal, good afternoon. Charles, it's nice to see you. June Girl, Devil Doll, and Melinda, if I missed you, and I know there's a lot of few people coming in here. Did I see three flying doves? There you are. It's nice to see you. Everybody else is coming in. Just a big, huge blanket. Uh, good afternoon. Please thank your local mod in the chat for dealing with a whole bunch of crap. <laughs> they make your chat Wonderful, trust me, it's not me by any stretch of the imagination. So if you're enjoying your time here and enjoying your conversation in the chat, give your, your uh, mods a thumb up, thumbs up, and an occasional thank you, right? An occasional thank you. They deserve it. They always deserve it. So um, just to get started, we're going to dive right in. We're going to dive right into this whole entire story about the things we don't believe, how we think that the, their, their behavior sucks by a show of freaking hands, I don't care what color hands you got. You got you. You can have pink hands, purple hands, green hands. By a show of hands, how many believe that their actions from start to finish to this point is an abomination? Like just is morally reprehensible. How many people believe that the conduct of the Proudfoots is morally reprehensible? I want to make sure that if they're watching this show. They understand how we feel. And this is not about any other thing than their behavior during this time. Their behavior. Raise your hand really big and high if you think their behavior is deplorable, despicable, and it lacks moral compass. Not something we like to hear or see from retired military. Let me just tell you that. That really burns my grits. You can fight for everybody else's right, but you can't fight for your own damn sons. Excuse my language. Just upsetting. So, we have that. We have the belt issue. We have all of these things. So, by a show of ones and twos, who believes that Chris Proudfoot Came, this is going to be a double part, so wait until I finish the question. Who believes that Christopher Proudfoot was home when whatever happened happened and snapped? By a show of ones, being he, he was home and he snapped. And two, this is a nothing burger. This is the wrong avenue to go down. Wrong theory. One, yes. Two, no. Home. Okay, so thank you, Mike, for being honest. So a lot of people, so there's are, there are a few people that think that he hasn't been home, but a lot of people do believe he was home. Okay. 
So this theory kind of goes to you. This, this, this whole thing goes to you and the people that don't believe he was home and believe that it was something else. Um, listen, you know, maybe you might find something, you may not change your mind at all, but you might think of something that, or hear something that you haven't heard before. The reason why I kind of think he was home is because I, just like with Madeline Soto, um, I, I, I just try to believe that a mom can't do that. I know that there are terrible moms. Like Candace Fly, I can look at her and tell that she's a terrible mom, right? So I have bias, and I get it. And I don't lie about it. I don't deny it. I have a bias. And so the part of me, especially when I hear that this person's highly educated, has military background, you know, has raised her, her son, but then we start hearing about the stuff we didn't know about, about how her lack of supervision led to uh, Sebastian going through a very serious and, um, you know, life-changing crime and not getting the right therapy for that. That is something that's concerning, you know, as, as a person from an outside looking in, I'm sure it concerns parents that have had uh, dealt with some situation like that and knows how important it is to, to get the proper care for your child after an event like that, uh, that had to walk through all of that with their child. There's people in my chat that's had to go through this. I guarantee it, I guarantee it. But then it really pisses us off. Excuse my language again. I gotta work on my language. I'm trying. I'm a work in progress. But I'm trying to. For, I'm trying to get rid of the f bomb. <laughs> Let's work on one thing at a time, okay? <laughs> the f bomb. Try to get rid of. I was. I, I never really said a whole lot of the GD, but occasionally it'll slip out. But the f bomb. I gotta work on, right? So we'll have to lean on a few other words. But. We see their behavior and we call it out. We're like, there's no emotion. You're you're not even talking about your son. You're not showing photos of your son. Every time you call, it seems like you call or go on um, uh, an interview. It's it's all it's something to, for you. It's something to clear your name. It's not really about Sebastian. And so I really truly believe, and I told you this once before, that I kind of believe in the back back of my mind that Christopher Proudfoot has already gotten an attorney remember and that was right about the time um, Nancy Grace said he wasn't he, he would refuse to take the polygraph and and we hear from TBI that they're giving him a legal advice which actually in all fairness it was kind of corroborated by Seth you know I didn't believe it if Seth didn't also concur he said they didn't tell him not to take it they just cautioned him about taking it Chris Proudfoot said they absolutely told him not to take it and um it's like, why are they giving him legal advice? And I remember saying, I think he's already lawyered up, right? Well, a lot of people are talking about how they're not talking about Sebastian in any of these interviews. So Katie Proudfoot decides to go ahead and, and give another interview. And I'm just absolutely floored. If you watch my video this morning, you know exactly why I'm absolutely floored. Well, guess what? That video wasn't good. It didn't show you. It didn't show you enough. So, guess what? I decided to go get it. We're blowing it up on the big screen, baby. We're going to watch this hot mess of an interview. Stay tuned. OP Nation, tonight, we need your help to Hold find... Hold on. We don't need to go through... Katie Proud, but... Here we go. <coughs> thanks for being with us under what must be very difficult circumstances. First, I want you to notice her face. First and foremost, let me get just that a little, let's make her a little smaller. There we go. I want, to, I want you guys to see me. I like to talk to people eyeball to eyeball. Look at her face. Straight, calm. Um, her eyes look fairly clear. Under her eyes. See, I, I, I'm a crier. When I cry, and I, and I have had, a, like, I've had losses, right? I've, I've had losses. I've had losses of people that have gone, um, you know, we'll never, I'll never see again, and losses of, of choices, right? We have losses. We, we go through grief when we, we lose somebody we love or we don't know where they are, right? It's just a natural thing. When I cry, when I'm crying, when I lose somebody and I'm uncontrolled and I can't stop crying, my eyes are red under here. It, it's almost blistered, right? Because we're constantly using tissue. 
Or if we're out of tissue because we went through the whole box of tissue, now we're on the paper towels. Now we're on the sandpaper. My eyes are puffy up here. It, it's like little pillows on the top of my eyes. I already have hooded eyes naturally. Okay, and then the bottom ones right there by my eye, they're like little, little marshmallows. Marshmallows. Because I cried. And that's only crying for maybe an hour. Good Lord, give me six weeks. I, I, I would probably, my whole face would be red. My whole face would be red. So the one thing I'm noticing here, right off the bat, is just her calm demeanor. Her, her facial expression. Her blank stare. She has not seen her son in weeks. Has no idea whether, I want to put this in perspective. She has no idea whether her son is dead or alive. I want every parent in my chat room right now, uh, the normal Joe out there, you tell me how you would act as a normal person if you did not know where your child was or whether they were dead or alive. Now you take that and don't, I don't want to hear this whole thing, oh, you know, people don't show their emotions. It's, it's kind of funny because they appear to be normal people. Not ones with any type of disability, mental or otherwise, that keep them from, from showing emotion. And if that's the case, bring your doctor's note. Because it's time to pony it up. Just saying. Dances. First of all, how are you and your family holding up? Um, I would say that this isn't a tragedy that we would wish anyone to ever experience. This isn't a tragedy. Hmm. I thought he just walked out the door. I didn't know running away from home was now a, a tragedy. Tragedy implies, you know, we use, you know, tragedy in a lot of things. Uh, very little do we ever use the actual word tragedy in conjunction with a missing person. Uh, we are, we're keeping our faith and we're praying. We're keeping our face. I, I, did she, did she, did she mean to say faith? F-A-I-T-H? Did she just say we're, we're keeping face? Let's hear that again. And we're praying every day. We're keeping our faith and we're praying every day. Sounds like she's saying faith, but it sure sounds like face. But it praying every day. I hope you are, lady. That we're going to find Sebastian. What's the latest on the search? So, law enforcement... It Hold on a second. Actually, I'm going to let you guys keep listening to that, and we're going to go back. Is ...exploring any and all possibilities. Um, they're communicating daily with us about updates and statuses. We, we have faith that all the law enforcement agencies involved are doing everything that they can, um, and we're going to find Sebastian and bring him home. Okay. 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 Hmm. Okay. Well, let's just see. I don't know. You know, normal mothers, normal moms, you know, and stuff like that. That don't know whether their child's dead or alive. Let's 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 see what a what a real what a what a normal what what a, what a normal Joe looks like. Katie Proudfoot, I really hope you are watching this show right now. I hope you're watching this show because. You need to watch this, rewind it, play it forward, play it backwards, go stand in front of the mirror, you know, make sure you get your expressions correct. She doesn't need to go do all that. You know why? Because she's truly a grieving mom that doesn't know where her child is. Let's see how her reactions. What does she look like when people are talking about her son? Let's let's look. And right now, we, we, we really are focusing, focusing on, on bringing Riley home. his last point. He's my best friend. He's everything. So now, Katie, if you, 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 you want to know why social media is pissed off at you, that's just a little dose of reality. Let's, let's, look, let's look at your pleading. Let's look at, let's, look, let's look at how you grieve for the loss of your child that has been missing longer than theirs. Let's, let's look. Let's see. We know the most important thing right now is to get the word out about Sebastian. What would you like our viewers to know about your son? You need to be cute on it, too. She needs to be cute on it. 
This is, you know, I, I don't like interviewers like this because they're coaxing them through this. I like to see their natural behavior and their natural environment, and that's not what we're getting with the news people. Again, that's a little bit of why I don't like mainstream media. Uh, Sebastian, he is high-functioning autistic. Look at that! Look at that! Let's go back! Let's go back! Watch her! Watch her! Breathe in! Breathe out! <sighs> Good Lord, I don't want to do this again. Why is everybody so concerned about my son? Jeez. Can we just get over this already? Can you guys just move on, please? She's, she's sick of us being up her crawl. We just need to get out of the case. She doesn't want to keep doing this anymore. Right now is to get the word out about Sebastian. What would you like our viewers to know about your son? Look at that! I'm sorry! I gotta stop it there. I gotta stop it. I can't even help it. I'm not gonna get through this video. We're at 25 minutes. The phone should be open right now, and I'm still stuck and stupid on this, this stuff here. Look at her face! Good grief! Good grief! Look at that woman's face! Katie! You ain't doing it right! You know why, Katie? Because you're faking it, babe! You're faking it. That's a grieving mom right there. That's a mom that doesn't know where her child is right there. That's a mom that refused to leave Nashville without bringing her boy home. She didn't get in a car and run three and a half hours away into a different state. Sorry. Hallelujah. Praise God. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Let's keep going. Let's, let's see. Let's see if she gets any emo. Let's let's see if we can we can get something from her. Let's just see. I mean, who knows? It is Sunday. Miracles can happen. Let's let's see. I mean, this was pre-recorded. I guess the ending's already des destined, right? We already know it. Uh, Sebastian, he is high functioning autistic. Um, he loves animals. He loves video games. He loves fishing. Green tea. You're so goofy. He's typically a very, very sweet boy. Um, he can't. Oh, oh, let, let's not forget the stab. Let's not forget, make sure that now he's a freaking monster. Let's let's see how you monsterize your son, lady. Let's see. Let's let's see here. Let's see. And Don't he's stop. Quite temperamental, though, if he's overstimulated. Quite temperamental. Quite temperamental. Do you guys remember on Smiley's World the Q and A? Smiley asked them. I know that because I can't remember verbatim what I asked, but she actually read my my question to them because I wanted to know because what I was thinking is that, you know, maybe he had an episode and got violent and Chris lost his cool because, you know, some guys just, you know, if you get hit, they, they just take it. You know, they can't they have no control after they're, they're they're touched. You know, there are some people like that. Right. And so I had thought maybe he that the Sebastian, because we watched a video of somebody that was autistic grabbing his mother's hair and, and she's having to be all calm. You got to calm down, son. You got to calm down. I, I understand, but you got to calm. Wow, he's just just taking her head and doing this. And mom's just being calm because that's the autistic. That's his his tick, you know, and mom's had to deal with it for so many years. So I saw that and I thought, oh my gosh, you know, maybe this is what caused it. Maybe it's this outburst. And so that's what prompted that question in, in Smiley's chat when she had that interview. And she asked him that. And Chris adamantly said, I remember like it's yesterday. You guys can go find it yourself. If you do find it, give, you know, send me the uh, timestamp and the, the link. I'd like to see it. But it was the, the, the interview Smiley had, the very first interview Smiley had with them. I don't know if she's had more, but I think she has. And he specifically said that, that Sebastian is not violent, that when he gets upset, he grabs his fist, he slams him down to the side, and he stomps his feet. Now she's in this interview, this latest one, pleading for people about her monstrous and violent son and temperamental son now, uh, for people to help find him. Yeah, let's not scare people off from finding him, lady, but I digress. I, I you know, I'm, a, I, I'm sarcastic at times, what can I say, just in my nature. Or if he's stressed out. He has a unique run. He runs like the, the Naruto anime character. No words. No words at all. 
No words at all. No tears. No emotion. And it's all her son's fault, it seems. Uh, when he's when he's excited, he likes to, to dab and he loves music. He loves to dance. That's all very... We really are focusing, focusing on, on bringing Riley home. His last point. He's my best friend. He's everything. Uh, when he's when he's excited, he likes to to dab and he loves music. He loves to dance. That's all very helpful information. Now, if Sebastian is out there watching, what would you like to say to your son? Okay, like if, 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 my, if I hadn't seen my child in six weeks and somebody asked me that, that question, I would be uncontrollably unglued, begging for him to pick up the phone, begging for him, just send up a flare, anything anything what is she looking at good point crystal lynn maybe she's got a bullet points in front of her so she makes sure she doesn't screw anything up who knows she is military I would say bubba we love you we all love you so much um we all love you so much son we love you so much we know you're out there you're going to come home to us we know you're going to come back to us we know you're going to come back to us. Uh, just come back to us. We haven't seen you in a while. We, we, we really are focusing on his last point. He's my best friend. He's everything. We're going to keep searching. We're going to find you. We're going to... Watching, what would you like to say to your son? I would say, Bubba, we love you. We yeah, mm -hmm. we love you, Bob. We love you, Bob. We love you, Bob. His last point. He's my best friend. He's everything. That is. We all love you so much. Um, wherever you are, just know that we are not going to stop. We're going to keep searching. We're going to find you. We're going to bring you <laughs> home. And if you, if you ever get an opportunity, find a phone, find a safe adult, call 911. Um, I'd also like to, to ask our community to please, please, please keep searching your properties. Keep sharing his flyer. And right now... We, we we really are focusing, focusing on, on bringing Riley home. his last point. He's my best friend. He's everything. Um, if you know something or you see something, please say something. Call the law enforcement immediately. We're going to do everything we can to help find him. Thank you. Now. Okay. Hmm. Interesting. I don't know what else to say than interesting. That was pretty interesting. Huh. I don't know. You know, I, I, I like studying people's behavior. I like uh, knowing how, what makes people tick. You know, it helps. I think it kind of helps everybody get along, you know. And... I look at people in a normal sense. Do I know that there are some people that have different things, you know, mentally, physically, and stuff like that that alters them from person to person? Of course, you know, I'm deaf in one ear. I'm getting blind. I'm getting old. I got gray hair. It sucks. We have a lot of stuff going on, but you know what? We all start losing our hearing, losing our vision getting gray. Why? Because it's normal. It's normal. I'm sick and tired of these talking heads saying, oh, well, you know, somebody's behavior. 
we're not dealing with people that are abnormal. They're normal people that should show normal emotions and behavior. They're not devoid of feeling. They've went through all kinds of psychology tests to get in the military. They went through all a battery of tests. We do not have mentally disturbed parents here. Well, we kind of do. But my point being, I don't know when they became mentally disturbed, but it obviously wasn't while they were in the military. Otherwise, they would have been dishonorably discharged or discharged for medical purposes or something to that effect. I don't know. Whatever. I don't want people beating me up because I got the terminology wrong. <laughs> That's not the point. The point is not the terminology. The point is the point I'm trying to make. Okay. So I'm tired. I'm, t I'm tired of hearing the lies. I'm tired of hearing the no emotion. I'm tired of hearing professionals telling me that everybody's emotional is different. These parents don't, they act like they know where their son's at and they're not crying one iota about trying to find him or locate him. To me, they're being forced to say this. This is the first time she actually said Sebastian's name and how we need to find him and actually spoke to her son some six weeks and all these interviews later the first time. Why? Because she was coached. Why was she coached? Because she looks horrible. And they need to show face. Oh, I'm sorry, faith. Phones are open, guys, if you'd like to call in. 724-249-6140. Sorry I was a little long-winded. I couldn't help it. I had to stop that video a lot, a lot of times. A lot more than I had planned originally when I was developing this show. Because there's just things that just... Mm, Get me. It gets me in my crawl. I gotta be honest with you. This gets me in my crawl. So for the people that are in that are asking, like, why are we going over this? It's because we're gonna go over all three of my theories and we're gonna go over the variation of those theories. Like, for example, what was the the three-hour phone call for? Right? What was the three-hour phone call for? Was it to set up their alibi? Can you guys hear the ring? Please tell me you can. This is Betty. Hi, Betty. My name is Kristen from Michigan. How are you? Well, hello, Kristen. It's nice to hear from you. It is. It's, it's nice to see people still doing the Sebastian Rogers thing. I'm new to the criminal kind of, you know, investigation. And uh, I just, I have uh, been watching some videos like the detective, I think it's Deception Detective. And yeah. they, he did one on Katie and Chris and you know, if you ever watch his videos, I did. I watched. I watched that very one because that's how I knew about the three. I didn't. I, you know, that, I didn't necessarily agree with everything he said, but I did agree with a lot. I did too, and I never knew about the three. And I believe he is a detective and a lawyer or something along that line. So he works in this like on a regular basis mm -hmm. and um he like he says he just wants us all to know but i never knew about the three and they brought up three many of times in that first interview um and how he said it is he swears up and down that they know that they walked out the front door and so he said either this is a deception spy or they physically watched him walk out that front door mm -hmm. And so after that, it almost made me believe that, you know, they do know more. And maybe they walked out the front door together. Hmm? That's why she's so adamant about him walking out the front door. Maybe that's why she's so adamant about him not having shoes on. Like he said, maybe it was a punishment that turned really bad. Yeah, but they also, a couple of them said that they thought, like, uh, one person has it in here, Peter Hyatt. He actually said that he believes they set him outside the front door for a punishment, and I de totally dis. I don't believe that's in their personality at all because they're so prideful of this image, and I don't think they're them, them allowing their neighbors to know they were having disciplinary issues with their child. I just don't see them wanting to make that public. I... I and I totally agree with you. I'm just totally, like, I'm with you. Like, I'm stumped, I'm stumped at the fact, you know, because I just recently, I have two older children, and I recently adopted out my youngest child because of the situation that went around it. And I cry for my son every 
day, and I have an open relationship with him. And so I just don't know how she can't go online and say, you know, his his favorite dog, you know, his dog, his dog misses him. Like, I think about stuff like that, like small little things. Like, I still have his little outfits that he w- he came home and I kept them for a month or two so I could bond with them before I did adopt them out. But just small little things, like me even talking about them right now breaks my heart. And there's no emotion on her face at all. None. It's, it's, it's heartless. It's like so, like I'm looking at her like this horrible mother, like she is the most heartless thing in the whole world. She has no emotion for her child, her missing child. I just, it's so right. hard. And then did you see that comment where somebody said they thought they seen him walking at 4.45 p.m. and then it said down there, Katie Brown said, did he have any shoes on? Yeah. Did you catch that one? Yeah, I caught that one. That was really early on in the uh, situation. And there's actually another one that came out about two hours ago with some uh, some video footage. But this person has tennis shoes on and a backpack. And while he has hair, it just doesn't, to me, doesn't look like um, Sebastian Rogers. But they say they saw it in Ohio or something. Well, you know, and that's what gets me, you know, you've watched and you, you've covered so many criminal cases because you do such a good job and I am such a big fan of you now and I you and Crime Lies and uh, Mrs. Brooks I love her too um, but you know you, you guys have been doing this for so long that you guys have been able to watch cases get solved and you knew it was the parents and so you go back and you watch these interviews and you're like oh that makes sense oh that makes sense you know and I watched the case with this little girl she was getting watched by her her brother's dad, and she supposedly walked out the front door. And the only reason that case got solved is because the little brother was in the car when he got rid of the body. And then about two or three months later, the fisherman that helped pull him out said, "Yes, I was the one that pulled him out. Yes, he was back there." But the cops were looking in the area that she was supposedly missing in and she was 45 minutes away almost kind of like the Maddie Soto case so it's almost like once they start that kidnapping thing is it that they're already you know two and a half three hours away and they're not going to search that far kind you know seeking like a criminal right you know kind of well you know what I also um I think when I added the <clears throat> The timing also, like, say, the theory of him walking out the door. Um, the way I calculated, like, his miles, I figured a leisurely walk for mileage is usually about 15 to 18 minutes per mile. And he would have been gone for six, you know, six hours, and you've got, you know, 60 minutes in an hour, so that's about three miles an hour. And you times that by um, six hours. You're talking about 24 miles, technically, he could have been, and they're searching a five-mile radius. So even if he left the house, you know, he could have been, he would have been outside by the time they started that five-mile radius search. Technically, theoretically, he would have been outside that search perimeter. Correct. And, you know, let's just, you know, let's go off of, you know, I'm with you. I totally think the parents have something to do with it. And people be putting me down because I'm like, Katie, you're ugly. I cannot believe you called your kid ugly. Like, where are you coming from? You had every damn ugly stick down the damn street. I'm not sure where you got any right talking about anybody being ugly and everything. You Did she say, say that, that about her like, son? I believe so. I believe she, I don't know if it was either her or Chris, but if I thought I heard the rumor, like they used to make fun of his laugh and tell me it was like goofy or something along those lines. Maybe I just, you know, made it in my head or something. But I thought I heard that through the rumor mill that they, they weren't very nice to him. Hmm. You know, and that's resentful. my horror. Resentful. You know, but what was I going to say before I get off? Oh, I was going to say I found it really, I really found it. Hold on, baby, I'm on the phone. Give me one second. Um, I really find it very, very odd that he wore black pants, black top, 
but when the cops were going to go look for him, they found a mannequin in the middle of a construction zone or by a water lake, and they really thought that they got him. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if that was put in the middle of the construction area to kind of keep them busy for a little bit or what, but a mannequin in the middle of a construction zone or by a lake, that's just odd for me. That was, that was pretty weird. And hearing that, like, you know, cause that, that, that audio was released and we're like, it's a mannequin. I'm like, that's awfully strange to have a mannequin. Cause the way they described it, it was literally in the woods, standing up, looking yeah. a direction. Yeah. Correct. They thought it was him. Cause it says like 10, four, we got him over here in the woods. I'm going to go get him right now. Click, click. And then it said about five minutes later, no, it was a mannequin in the middle of the woods. Click, click. It's not the boy. Mm -hmm. You know, and that I was like, oh, you put a mannequin in this. I know, okay, I know lots of construction men, and they're not going to take extra crap to work that they don't have to carry. Exactly. Exactly. So why would a... Why, no. Do, do you right, have do you have any kind of uh, experience in construction or anything like that? I don't, um, and um, I don't think that he is buried in the construction zone. Um, I kind of am going with the whole um, wherever they are located. Isn't there most of their family like about a half an hour to forty five minutes up Tennessee? I believe if he's going to be found, I think he might be anywhere like Gallatin because that is where the family is more familiar at, where they can get away with things at, and stuff like that. So no, I don't think he's in Summer County. I think he's in Tennessee, but where located, I'm not exactly sure. I thank you for that. Thank you. Have a great You're day welcome. and God bless. You too. Thank uh, you. God bless. Bye-bye. Uh -huh. So interesting. And you know what? I have to agree with Holler a little bit. You know, Gallatin, I didn't even th start looking over in the Gallatin area, but that would, if he's from the Gallatin area and his parents, that would be an area that, that he might be comfortable in. I'm looking for an area that Chris is comfortable in. This is Betty. Well, hello, Miss Bullhorn, Betty. Well, hello. Who's this and where are you calling from? Um, I'm Jennifer and I'm calling from Kingston, Tennessee. Why does your um, name sound familiar? Well, your, your voice sounds so familiar. You've called here before? Are you and my mom? No, this is, <gasps> this is my first time calling. <laughs> you, know, you got a very very familiar voice. Well, it's nice to see you. Nice to hear you. Oh, it was nice to talk to you. Um, you know, I was watching the interview that she did today, and in that interview, she was claiming that her son gets aggressive, you know, when he's overstimulated, and so I kind of thought in my head for a little bit. I'm like, well, if he gets overstimulated and he gets aggressive, they had a full day of fun that day. Who's to say they didn't come home and he wasn't listening and started getting aggressive with her and something happened between the two. And then, you know, she called her husband to tell him what happened. Because I really believe they're in this together. Oh, yeah. Yeah. We're going to be talking. She's my, she's theory three. So we'll be talking about this theory. Then we'll be talking about because uh, this is the one where Chris is home. So we have the third, the second theory, which is Chris was in Memphis and snuck in the house without her knowledge. And the third theory is Katie is the aggressor. Right. And, you know, I really believe she's, if she's so emotionless over all of this. She's got some anger in her. She's got some issues in her because there's nobody in this world. You know, I'm a mother. And as... I get into my emotions over, you know, even just a little bit of worry, you know. I, there's just no way I can see a mother not bawling her eyes out every day, not out there, boots on the ground, literally bleeding out there looking for their kids. Her eyes did so, not look like she had been crying. Absolutely not. No. And my husband and I have really been in this case really deep. We watch you and JLR, and, but, you know... I've got my notifications on for you, and, you know, I love watching your show, and my Thank husband you. does, too, so. <laughs> well, I appreciate it. And... Do you think, let me ask you this, if, if, so in your, but either way, we believe that, in your theory, you still believe Chris um, transported or, or, or took care of. Absolutely. 
Do you think that he would be, he would have gone toward Memphis, or do you think he would have gone toward Gallatin, or do you think he would have tried to set up Seth somewhere and, and tried to start moving toward Clarksville? You know, I honestly think you set him out the other day of like a scenic route that he could take. Yeah. He did like the doubling back. The, the co- I call it the Coburger route. That, yes. I think that makes more sense. Um, just for the simple fact that he is familiar with that. He knows it's a scenic route. He can get away with more stuff. And it's similar to the route that he would, anybody would actually take to get to where he was going. Yeah. Just yeah. a little bit off course, but still familiar. Yeah. And it's a lot more desolate back there, it seems. So I was yeah. thinking, you know, I, I've been, I just had, I haven't even looked at the map since then. I had to give my eyes a rest. I was, I was circling, the, like, it's going to take me like five years to go through the maps I'm circling. So I've got to try to. <laughs> it's a lot. And you do a lot of work with this. And, yeah. You know, my husband and I, we have come up with some stuff here. And every time we come up with it, we hear you talk about it. And, you know, I honestly think, that, that that three hour phone call is a huge part of it. I think. That do you is think like she had? The, do you think that they really did have the phone call, the three hour call, or do you think that that was her alibi? Well, you know, I okay. I think the alibi part is a big part of it. That way, you know, they can say, "Well, we were on the phone." There is no other person that could go for that alibi. There can nobody could clear that, but the two of them. So if they're on the phone together then it's kind of like a, well, here you go. This is what I was doing when literally nobody else in this world could say that. And you know what? <clears throat> when you got on this, when you got on my call, you said something about Chris being at work and something, and it sparked something in, and I think it was about the, a phone, and you sparked something in me that I had not thought about. Does Chris Proudfoot have a work phone as well? Because he was talking what? about having a radio in one side and his phone in the other. Does he have a work phone? Is there two phones that we need to be concerned about? I have said that from the very, very beginning. Because, you know, if you work with some kind of construction and especially with this train operator, you're going to have some kind of line of communication with the people that you're working with. And it's more than likely it's not going to be a personal cell phone. Right. And it could be a little burner, whatever. And, you know, you can do all this stuff without having an ID. You don't have to put your real name in. Mm-hmm. And just like the storage units that are across from the campground. There are storage units, which I'm not sure about that one. But you could get online and get these storage units, pay with a, you know, prepaid card and put right. a bogus name in and, you know, do whatever that you want to do. And there's no, you know, no telling who's that, who it is. Gotcha. Yeah, that's a good point. Well, I'm going to be, but I'm going to be there on the 21st. I don't know where I'm going to be yet. I haven't, I haven't, I haven't planned my schedule, so, so to speak yet. I mean, I've got an idea, but I, I haven't planned it. I haven't firmed it up. So one of those things is the uh, storage units. Well, I'm excited about you coming. I feel like your boots on the ground is going to make a difference. And I, we have literally lost sleep over this boy. I have been so mad at these parents. You know, if they are not guilty, they are not doing one thing publicly to try to say any different. I just never in my life, I'm... I just wish they would either stay, I mean, because I feel bad, I mean, I, I really feel bad for, you know, parents that do stupid stuff and, and is trying to, to change the world's mind about them. Like, it's just like, <clears throat> you've already been caught with your pants down too many times. All you're going to do is make things worse at this point. There's nothing you can do to fix this situation. You, you, you right. I mean, there, she she has no she she can't grieve for her son. Why can't she grieve for her son? I don't know, but she can't. So she, she knows exactly what's going on, and there's just no faking anything. You know, there's people out there that just cannot bring themselves to face anything, especially emotions. And right. I feel like that she knows exactly what's happened. There's just in her whatever in her mind, she cannot literally fake anything. So why even try? Mm-hmm. I mean, even when she, like that whole, and that that might be right, because remember that very first interview, they asked her a question, the first thing that she asked, she goes, (laughs) she starts smirking and laughing about it. Like she, like she, and it's like, I don't know if that's the reaction I would have with a missing child and having a camera in front of me. I think, I think I'd be terrified, not laughing. Well, I'm going to tell you one thing. I have dealt with a, the most narcissistic person you could ever deal with. And I did for years, and it was awful, and it's something 
that you, now that I've been through it, I can point out somebody that's like that in a heartbeat. Chris Proud said it's the biggest narcissist there is. And I'm telling you, with somebody that is involved in a relationship like Katie and with that person, she knows how he is. Mm-hmm. There's no doubt about it. Not a doubt in my and mind. If you're gonna, and if you're going to back him up on abusing your kid at any point in time, you're dead wrong. But it shows that she has fear of him. Yeah, but you know what? And she had an op- She was away from him. When he went back to that campground, yes. and when she went back to the campground and came home by herself, she was away from him. She had an opportunity right then to call law enforcement and do the right thing. And she still continues yes, and continues to back Chris up. I see that she appears to be at her home now. But that's the- what it looks like. But, you know, whoever went by to see where, you know, at the campground and her car was gone, I had a thought whenever her car was gone, I said, I bet she went back home to do an interview. And I'll read that the interview popped up and she looks like she's at home and I have a feeling she probably just went home to do that and that was it and that's probably why he unhooked his truck because he knew if he needed to leave he would have to because that was an interview just by her where was Chris Yep. why wasn't Chris at this interview I think they really need to dig hard on these parents and I don't know what law enforcement has got going on and you know like everybody said they are not entitled to tell us anything yeah, and it's a criminal invest or it is an investigation, and they don't have to tell us some anything. But I think they should tell us something. Well, I I kind of agree and disagree because I think that this is a safety issue. You you've got two right. people that potentially hurt a child. They have nothing to lose. Uh, that's a, that's putting the public in danger. I'm sorry, it just is. Um, no, if it, if it's a stranger that. danger type of thing, still the same scenario. We've got somebody out there that, you know, hurt a child or, you know, kidnapped a child or abducted a child or whatever the case may be. And, you know, it's, I don't know. So, well, thank you so much for calling in. I really appreciate the uh, conversation. Thank you. Well, thank you for talking to me, and it was nice talking to you. Yeah, God bless, and have a great Sunday. You too. Bye bye. Uh-huh, bye bye. All right, I got I got enough for one more phone call. If you if anybody wants to call in, I've got time for one more before I close up the show for today and send you on your way. I hope everybody there is a call. This is Betty. Oh my God, I can't believe I made it through. Who's this and where are you calling from? It's Lisa from Nevada. Oh, well, Lisa from Nevada, what do you think about this crazy Sebastian Rogers case and our theory one that Chris just snapped? Savage Live Media, bitch. How appropriate. How appropriate. Well, go to another one. This is Betty. Hi, Betty. This is Shay Shay from Texas. How are you doing? Oh, Shay Shay. It's nice to hear from you. How are you? I am well, thank you. I think that Katie Proudfoot has lack of emotion because she's probably on the autistic spectrum as well. Interesting. Yeah, well, you know, I don't know. Maybe you can educate me. I don't know. How does... I've always equated autism with possible lack of oxygen during the the birth process. And some people say that that is possible, but not necessarily true. Yeah, and autism is is hereditary as well. And a lot of times women go undiagnosed. Hmm. And that would explain the type of work she does as well. It's like mechanically engineering. Hey, 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 hey. hey, hey. You're talking about a plumber slash electrician slash auto repair girl slash <laughs> I have emotion <laughs> yeah well I, I really truly with the blank the blank looks on her face my, my daughter-in-law is on the spectrum and my grandson is autistic and I really truly think but that's that an Katie, assumption you know Katie, we're, we're trying well, we're assuming that to, to justify her behavior though in my opinion I know but I, I can just see it like in her face I, I truly think she's on the spectrum uh, okay well I mean he, he had to I don't know if it's a hereditary if the autism is hereditary or not I don't really understand it too well 
Mm-hmm. Um, but I guess if it is hereditary, it's got to come from somewhere. Exactly. And now I'm not excusing like them not searching or anything like that, mm-hmm. but I really truly think that that's why she has a blank look on her face. Well, then what's the, because... the issue for Chris? Same thing? He's autistic? <laughs> I'm sorry. No, I I'm being Chris, so, I'm such a smart I think, aleck. <laughs> I think if Chris did it, it was all premeditated. I don't think it was an accident. Oh, okay. So that's going to be uh, theory two. So that's going to be in a day or so. We're going to explore this one for probably another 20, uh, you know, like tomorrow or something. We're probably going to explore this. So I would think probably Thursday we'd be exploring um, theory two, which is the pretty meditated one. Uh-huh. So all right, well, that's all I wanted to say. All right, love bug. Will you take care? Rock it out with your coffee beans out. Okay, thank you. Uh-huh. Bye bye. Bye bye. All right, guys. Well, we see what kind of garbage creators that want to take away from a 15 year old child um, is willing to do. So bless them on this beautiful Sunday. I hope. Oh, I hit a button. This is a test. There we go. So, you know, I just don't understand what the purpose of it is, but we do have trashy channels here on the streets of YouTube and ones that need attention because they can't grow because they're trashy. So please excuse, and I apologize for that uh, caller that called in here that needed attention, but we do have those occasionally. But it's pretty crappy that they would take away from a 15-year-old child, an autistic child. Such a shame. Such a shame. Disgusting if I had to say so myself. So guys, I hope you have an amazing Sunday. God bless each and every one of you. Go rock it out with your coffee beans out and don't forget to tell your family and friends that you love them, you're there, and you care. God bless.